up, people? Marco here. And uh, we're going to be having some fun with the Omerta by Critical Minds. So this is the uh, atomizer everyone's been going crazy over. I mean, you've seen the ads on uh, PVFB. You've seen it uh, on the Critical Minds page. Now you're going to find out why... Um, why everyone sold on it. So uh, since I have a build installed and I wanted to um, you know to show you what it looks like inside up front uh, I'm gonna be showing you how it works first before I take it apart and shit okay so um, you'll notice of course it's very small uh, based on what they put out the, uh, the measurement of the top cap is at or the entire atomizer is at um, 20 millimeters so it's a lot smaller than some of the stuff out there and uh, even that has a purpose. So one thing about the atomizer, and I'm going to say it right off the bat, is that everything has um, has purpose in it. So you know, if you watch the Matrix, purpose—it's what drives us and shit. So that's basically the uh, the concept behind the atomizer. It has a very minimalistic design on the outside. So you're probably wondering, shit, that thing looks small. That thing looks plain. That thing looks like it's not going to do anything new. You're fucking wrong. That's where um, that's where all the um, the innovation and the uh, the countless sleepless hours that the um, the Critical Minds team um, put into it will um, you know surface, and uh, you're gonna see in just a bit how it hits. So I'm using a Silver Dragon mod, so it's an SS mod with silver coated pins, and um, we're gonna see how it vapes on it. So that's using the side airflow channeling. If you'll notice, the uh, the top cap has um, channels on the side. So you have one for a dual coil setup. You know, you have one on either side, and you have one that you can use for single coils, which the atomizer can more than accommodate. There are also um, flow controls on the top. For anyone wondering, no, it is not possible to use both the top flow and the side flows simultaneously, unless you take the airflow control ring off. So this is basically the top. So again, it has orientation for dual coils and one for single coil builds. Okay. Um, when you use the um, the top flow, normally you'd be able to um, to just swirl it around, but I made some modifications, so I have to pull it out. So there you go. It is selective and it's fastened down by an O-ring. So we're just gonna align the um, top portion and. Um, you're going to notice a slight drop in the vapor output, but definitely not in the quality of vape that you're getting. All right. So um, I mentioned everything and it has a purpose and that is what we are going to be talking about more. I wanted to keep the video simple, I didn't want to get into the nitty gritty of it, but that wouldn't do the atomizer much justice. So we're going to take the top cap off, take the whole damn thing apart and show you what it's all about. So this is what the inside looks like. Okay, It's pretty hot, but uh, that's what the inside looks like. So these are the negative terminals which stand erect with poles that are parallel but we're going to talk about the orientation more later and the, this is the uh, the positive terminal which is fastened down by this little pie like protrusion right here okay now your leads shoot in one one lead of each build will shoot into either one of these poles which um, if you'll notice if, I don't know if the camera can capture it but um, it's angled okay so they're facing opposite directions that intersect diagonally. If you um, if you look at that part right there, you can see one of my leads sticking out there, the other lead sticking out right over there. Why are the poles oriented like that? No, it's not a factory defect. They were oriented like that so that when you stick your leads in, it doesn't go out through the other pole making it a real bitch to clip. That's the reason why they oriented it in that manner. Now for the, uh, the positive portion of the, um, the atomizer, you're going to notice um, it fastens down. So I'm going to take the cotton out so that you can see it more clearly. Because anyway, I got to re, you know, I got to redo my coils. So I'm going to take this out. All right, there you go. Okay, there. So this is what it looks like 
with just the coils installed. All right. So the positive um, portion right here, fastened down by these two screws, goes. Um, this is what makes building a bit tricky, and I'm sure anyone who's seen the photos was probably sort of taken aback by the uh, the fact that it's not your usual type of atomizer. That's fucking straight. It's not the type that you just plug and play. This this is going to require some effort, especially when you're using thicker gauge wire. Now these are 0.50 millimeter Canthal wires that I use for these coils. As you can see, I've been using it for a bit because they're dirty as fuck. All right. So there. Um, there is a laser engraved um, CM logo right here. So we're going to pull this out of alignment so I can show you. There you go. Uh, Critical Minds logo. That isn't a rust stain. It's not a juice stain. Those are burn marks from the laser engraving because the engraving on this thing is pretty deep. Okay. Uh, the Critical Minds logo right there. Can you can you see it? Let me get a bit of light on it. There you go. Okay. So that's basically the inside. little help from my cameraman right there. Thank you. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much what the inside looks like. Now back to the positive terminals. Uh, you have to stick one lead underneath, so it coils underneath this. So if you're using thicker gauge wire, it might be a bit of a challenge, but it's oriented in such a way that it is very easy for you to um, to, to stick it right through the grooves in this pie. That's why if you notice, the pie has a bit of um, a concave right here which allows you to loop your um, your lead your other lead right through and fasten it down as you tighten the screws down okay so now my coil looks like shit we're not gonna be using it anymore during the video anyway but that's um, you know this is basically what the inside looks like I can still realign it but it's not gonna fade properly there you go okay now the uh, the underneath of the um, of the atomizer has a really nice hashtag fuck clones um, laser engrave on it. There you go. So this is uh, this is sort of a movement that the Critical Minds team is um, is looking to start. There you go. And it's fastened um, by a native 510 connection and a an adjustable copper contact point right there. If you're wondering. These uh, these build sections, each positive and negative terminal, these are independent, but they are joined at the bottom, underneath the um, the main deck. Okay, so this is a singular positive thing. So it is possible to orient your your build such that one lead fastens into this negative terminal here, and an, and the other lead fastens here. So you can have the build sitting parallel to these poles like that. I tried it. It gives a really, really good throat hit and a really um, good flavorful vape, especially when you use the top airflow control. But it gives really, really shitty vapor output. Maybe I built it wrong, I don't know, but it gives shitty vapor output that way. So it might be something you want to try and play around with, but um, I'd still go for a traditional dual coil. No sleepers, no fancy um, twisted whatever builds. Uh, I'm just going to stick to the traditional dual coil. That's basically how I, how, how I prefer it. It may or may not work for you, but that's basically it. The uh, serial number engraving is right there. We're going to need some light on it again. It's there on the positive portion of the pie. And there is some magic to the serialization that they used. I'm not... Uh, I wasn't made privy to the information because it is one of the uh, measures taken to prevent the atomizer from being cloned. Hence the uh, fuck clones <laughs> engrave on the bottom there. So that's uh, that's about it for the deck. I'm going to talk about how the um, upper sleeves work. I wanted to keep this simple um, in keeping with the, uh, the simple nature, the simple... Um, aesthetic nature of the atomizer. So it is, um, it, it's sort of a two-part thing, okay? This fastens down onto that. So this is what the top cap looks like bare. Okay. It has the Omerta en engraving, laser engraved on the, uh, the side, which you can use as a guide if you're trying to stick on the um, single airflow on the side, okay? So that's uh, pretty much what it looks like. Normally, um, you would be able to twist the um, 
the airflow control cap because it's fastened down by an o-ring and there is enough clearance. I told you everything was thought of when it came to this atomizer. The clearance between one sleeve and the, uh, the main cap is such that you can actually twist it, but since I have my fingers all juiced up and everything, we're not able to do that. So the, um, the airflow works one of two ways. You can use it traditionally using side ventilation right here, pointing directly where your coil would be. So when it's fastened down like that, let me get it aligned properly. When it's fastened down like this, say, maybe about three quarters of the way dilated, when you fasten it onto a single uh, single coil, imagine this were a single coil. I don't have the, uh, the patience to take it out. So imagine it were a single coil. You could just have it facing there. So the airflow channels in straight through here, through your coil, and up into your trip tip. It works the same way if you were using a dual coil setup, except it would be coming out of both sides. Right there. If you were to use the top airflow, which is sort of a, um, a popular thing nowadays when it comes to atomizers, this offers a very unique spin on it because if you look at the actual cap, there are these slits right here where the air channels in as you take your draw straight down, still through your coils, except that it has a much more reduced airflow chamber because it's passing in through those slits down that um, that concave portion that I showed you, that recessed portion underneath. So it gives it a much more flavorful quality, almost similar to what you would get from a tank, one of those bottom-fed coil tanks. Okay, so using these, you can also orient it with a single top-fed flow right there, or dual ventilation. One really nifty feature that I like about the top, uh, the top ventilated version is that whenever I vape on it, I get, um, you know how when, when you used to smoke actual cigarettes, when you're towards the end of your stick, when you're down to the filter, you have that burning sensation around your lips. Well, because of the ventilation, as you take your pulse, when the air funnels out through here, it gives you that warm tingle around your lips. Now, that's not too good if you're vaping super sub-ohm, like let's say 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.3 ohm and you're firing a fully charged battery or you're using a, a TI chip enabled device, it's really gonna burn your lips with a nasty burn. But on regulated devices where you can get your sweet spot just on, it's not only gonna give you a quality vape in terms of flavor and a decent amount of vapor output, but it's also gonna give you a very enjoyable, almost lifelike simulation of smoking an actual cigarette. So that's, uh, that's probably the niftiest feature of the Atomizer, apart from its very minimalistic design. It is a 22 millimeter um, diameter at the base, so it sits flush on anything 22 mm. I had it on a um, slanted 26 650 mod, and it, it looks really nice on 26 mods because the, the, the size contrast is just, is just crazy. I, I don't have an 18350 battery here, but when you stand it up next to, say, let's say a Cherry Vape, even the Cherry Vape stands taller than it does. Let's stand it up that way. See? So here's a bit of a size comparison. So 30 ml bottle, Cherry Vape drip tip, the Omerta. Even the Cherry Vape is taller than it is. So if you're into stealth setups, this is definitely one of the, um, the cuter atomizers that can definitely deliver. Now, I'm using the term uh, minimalistic a lot. Why is that? Because um, a lot of atomizers nowadays, uh, they, they, they're, they're way, way too flamboyant in terms of um, aesthetics. This keeps it simple. The concept behind it is performance, you know, um, function over fashion, if you will. That's how I see it, um, based on you know the conversations I've had with the Critical Minds team and my experience with it. I've been using it for about a week, a week and a half now. I was able to test out one of the earlier protos, and um, definitely they improved a lot. I mean, you're not going to notice it if you if you haven't seen the actual prototype, but this is um, this is definitely leaps and bounds beyond the prototype that I tried sometime early this month or late July sometime then. So, God, I can't get over how small it is. It looks cute as fuck whenever you put it on an, um, an, an 18350 mod. Now, um, it comes with um, a replaceable airflow control sleeve. The pricing on the sleeves is going to be um, really, really cheap. I'm, I haven't been um, given the, uh, the authority to disclose the actual SRP on the sleeves, but they, they will come in a, uh, a brass finish, an SS finish, 
a, uh, a black finish, and surprisingly a pink one. <laughs> Rose pink, I shit you not. So, um, they will be sold separately, and I have been promised that they will be at ridiculously cheap prices, considering it's an, uh, an aesthetic upgrade. So I'm just waiting for the brass one, because I want to put it on a brass mod. But um, the SS is what what um, what comes with it. It is, uh, when you buy it, it comes in a nice wedding ring-like box, one of those plush boxes, almost like a suede finish on it, with an authenticity card inside, plus a complete set of spares, uh, insulators and um, screws. Uh, I am guessing because these screws are actually um, specialized. These are customized screws. These aren't the types that you'd be able to buy at hardware stores. Uh, the reason behind that is because the Critical Minds team wanted to make sure that they were using 304 grade, food grade, um, stainless steel material. So everything was thought of when it came to the, uh, you know, the, uh, the after sales and all. I like the message that the, um, the spares send, um, send the, uh, the consumers because basically it, uh, it tells you without actually telling you that, hey, we're not going to leave you fucking hanging. If, if something goes to shit, you're not going to have to wait one to two weeks to get that replaced. You, know? you can easily have it replaced, take it to the shop where you bought it. The guy is going to know how to put everything back together. And there you go. Uh, another nifty bit of trivia about the atomizer is that Everything here is hand assembled. Yes, it is machined. Everything else is machined with the, the laser engraving and the machining of the parts and all that because these are precision parts that we're using. But everything is hand assembled. So all of the releases are actually labors of love from the other uh, Critical Minds team. This, um, this atomizer comes at a price of 3,500 Philippine pesos. Okay. And um, the sleeves I will not be able to discuss yet because um, I haven't been given the SRP on it. So we're going to talk about that later on. And um, that's basically it for the Omerta by Critical Minds. I don't want to get into too much detail because, you know, in keeping with the simple nature of the atomizer and the complex internals, I just want to keep it down to the basics, what you need to know if you're going to be buying one. So that's basically it. Uh, reseller shops, you can PM the CM International page and uh, inquire as to which shop nearest you will be stocking it. Um, they have not held back, definitely. So, um, I'm sure they'd want me to send this message. Fuck clones. <laughs> they would appreciate me emphasizing that message, I'm sure. So, uh, I wanted to give a thank you to, um, to Gayot and to, uh, to Takasu for sending this over. It's, um, it's definitely one of those that I will not be letting go, ever. <laughs> so I'm going to keep this uh, tucked away and um, probably going to be my all-day thing for my DNA mod. So I'm thinking it's going to look pretty swanky on this. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, probably. But anyway, uh, that's it for the Omerta by Critical Minds. If anyone's wondering, just one last bit, Omerta means uh, Code of Silence. I don't know why that was the name they picked. Maybe because when they pitched the, uh, the whole idea to me uh, a while back, I was requested not to leak any of the photos out, so that's why you're only seeing the pictures now. But uh, anyway, this has been cooking for a very long time. And um, definitely, and very evidently, it was worth the wait. So, that's about it. I'm going to catch you all soon. I'm getting pretty sleepy. It's, uh, it's one in the fucking morning. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm going to catch you all soon. Thank you for taking time to watch it. Y'all be part. Cheers.